Welcome back, everybody, to another year of Caravan of Garbage. Whoa, we're back. Whoa. 2024 energy. I didn't go on a holiday, and then it was, you know, you're with your kids. It's not that... It's not that restful. <laughs> it's, not, it's not really a holiday. <laughs> but you love them. I do love, love them, Mason. Kids. You wouldn't chuck them in a bin. I definitely wouldn't. Mm. You wouldn't chuck them in a backpack and then web them to a bin, would you? <laughs> Unlikely. Mm. Anyway, so we thought we'd kick things off. Seeing as spum, you know, it's moving into gear this year, isn't it? Do we have to explain what spum is? Yes. The Sony Pictures universe of Marvel movies. Mm -hmm. I mean, we call it spum. They call it something else. Yeah. It may not even exist by the time this video comes out. <laughs> they may have cancelled it all. I don't know. Absolutely. But Madam Web is coming out. Yep. Kraven the Hunter. Kraven the Hunter. Maybe another Venom movie. Venom 3. Wow. So we thought, seeing as we've done the Sam Raimi Spider Man trilogy and we've done the Mark Webb. Amazing Spider-Man duology. I was going to say duopoly. It was supposed to be a trilogy. Oh, <laughs> then that's they right. just went, went. We can't. Yeah, look, we did basically three movies worth of stuff in that last one. So, <laughs> so why don't we circle back to the John Watts Spider-Man movies? Ooh. But how did we get here? This room. I walked in. No, how did we get to Spider-Man movies? These ones. In what particular. do you mean? <laughs> okay. First of all, leave a like. Okay. Then we'll reveal the secrets. How do we get here in terms of like licensing? Some of this we've covered, so I'm just going to quickly go through oh, it, please all right? Please do. So in 1998, the Wall Street Journal reported that Marvel proposed to sell their film rights to nearly its entire roster, so Iron Man, Black Panther, Thor, for $25 million to Sony. Okay. And Sony went, we don't give a shit. We'll take Spider-Man for $7 million and that's it. And this back in the day, this is the era where Marvel was going bankrupt every other week. And yeah. so they're like, we'll take that deal. We'll mm -hmm. take whatever terrible deal any film studio is offering. Now, it's easy in hindsight to say, sure, this franchise is worth now X number of billion dollars. Mm. But Sony couldn't have built this anyway. If they had all of these properties? The MCU, no, absolutely not, no. Not a chance. No. So we got the Sam Raimi trilogy, and then they rebooted with the Mark Webb duopoly, and Marvel came to them and proposed an idea. Let's get married. <laughs> yeah, pretty oh, much. Wow. Let's have a civil ceremony. <laughs> Nothing religious. Oh, ah, yeah, okay, sure. This won't be recognised under the eyes of God. So they said, why don't we have Spider-Man appear in several MCU films, right? The old Scorp Tower was even going to be the one from the Mark Webb movies, in the Avengers movie originally, right? <gasps> Didn't end up happening. So this was rejected by Sony. They said, no, thank you. We're actually killing Spider-Man right now. Yeah, killing like it with Spider-Man, sorry. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Bit of a slip of the tongue there, Mason. Mm. Anyway, they killed Spider-Man with the Amazing Spider-Man 2. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The Sony hack happened. A bunch of stuff was released about how they were doing all these spin-off movies, including an Aunt May prequel spy movie. Basically, all the stuff that they're doing now... <laughs> yeah, the leftover stuff. Hey, there's been a lot of years and a lot of people have made fun of all this stuff, but it's all we have left. So. <laughs> Pretty much. Let's just do it, I guess. It's yeah. more time. It's more been time. Apparently it's a, it's a meme, isn't it, it? it? So a new deal was formed where Marvel would collect 5% of the gross of all the MCU-produced Spider-Man films. Only 5%? Well, that was the original deal that changed uh, again uh, a few uh, years uh. back. And in return, Disney and Marvel Studios would be allowed to use Spider-Man in their films. But also, this is a great deal for Marvel in general because Marvel already have the rights to merch and, you know, they can use him in animated series and all of that. It's basically Sony only have the live-action film and maybe some television distribution rights. Uh, okay, right. sure, sure. And the original contract was for five movies. It was Captain America Civil War, which we'll come back to at some point. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This movie we're looking at today, Infinity War, Endgame, Spider-Man Far From Home. I see. And that's how we got little boy Tom Holland Spider-Man. Oh, the yes. youngest Spider-Man who we've ever seen on screen, an actual teenager at time of casting. That's right. If you can believe such a thing. He's since become a big real man. He's Nathan Drake now. He's a big real man. He's a big real man <laughs> We're with a Henley. You know, you can't be a little boy in a Henley. Yeah, they won't let you. Anyway, I think Tom Holland is a really good Peter Parker slash Spider-Man. I agree. One of the things that this movie does really well is that it replicates the youthful energy of a high school by using actual teenagers in the school. That's right. They went out of their way to go, let's base this on kind of a John Hughes 1980s mm. high school kind of dynamic. A breakfast club. Yeah. A 16 candles. Exactly. Mm. Another one, probably. That's planes, trains and automobiles. Same vibe. 
And that's kind of the thing that Marvel aims for or says that they're doing. They're like, the Winter Soldier is like our espionage one. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Skrull Invasion one, that's like our espionage one. <laughs> that's right. Another one is like our espionage one, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, They're going hardcore on the espionage ones, I'll tell you they what. They certainly are. And it, and it always works. <laughs> it always worked every time. But how do you feel about Tom Holland in this role and just the vibe of this in general? It's a, it's a good vibe. I'll, I'm, I'm liking him in this. I think this, this is maybe the... We'll get to the other two in subsequent weeks, but I think the first two have like the strongest... The strongest concept, let's make it like that high school kind of teen comedy vibe. We get all the markers of the teen comedy vibe. You know, we've got a, we, he has to go to a party and mm -hmm. nobody thinks he's cool and got to prove himself. But all the circumstances, you know, conspire against him so he can't show off me cool as Spider-Man at the party. And, you know, and he's got a bully who in this instance, it's it's Tony Revolori who yep. most people might know from the, from the Wes the Anderson. The TV series Willow. Is he? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay, great. You know that. Terrific. That's a canny idea to make this version of Flash Thompson kind of uh, just a more of a psychological bully. Yeah. Because at this point, this version of Spider-Man, he's had a full-on fist fight with Captain America. Yeah. Uh, so there's no high school bully that could stand up to him physically, like not even like Flash Thompson in the first movie, you know, kind of thing. It just, exactly, just yeah. paced him. Yeah, I like that a lot. And maybe he'll become a version of Venom or something at some point, do you think? I'd say probably not. No, probably not. Yeah, yeah. I like him, though. I think he's good. Now, there's been criticisms of this movie in that, well, I think this trilogy in general... That this isn't so much Spider-Man as it is Iron Boy. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I can't really argue with that. It's just a different take, you know? Yeah, but I, and I think, again, we'll talk about it in the subsequent movies, you know, it, at least in the next one, it's Spider-Man on his own. In the comic books, it doesn't really matter, you know, where the villains come from. It's just a guy who wants to rob banks. He also has built a flight suit or yeah. whatever. It, it, it's, it's really irrelevant because that's the kind of the, the, the two-dimensional world they live in. And obviously... But this the, is the movie. You can't do movie. that. This is the MCU. It's three, three-dimensional, at least. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you're in D-Box. Maybe <laughs> you're in Smell-O-Vision. I don't know. I don't know where you go to the... You, Freaky movies. What do those webs smell like? That's exactly right. Webs. So in this, so in this universe, you need an, ex, you know, to to build a reason why this guy would be, you know, you know, a, a, a high tech costumed villain kind of thing. And and I I enjoy this guy's backstory, you know. Mm. And I, you know, sh sure he's putting high tech deadly weapons onto the streets, but also I agree with him. Yeah, he's right. <laughs> he's right. <laughs> he's a man who worked hard, started his own business, and then a bigger fish just showed up and just. Just, just took this everything is mine. he had. This is mine. So I understand his grievances and I'm on his side. Yeah. But the problem there is because he's, he, that he's so intrinsically tied to Iron Man, it's just Spider-Man in this instance fighting an Iron Man villain that Iron Man couldn't be bothered fighting. <laughs> yeah. He's not big enough to be on his radar. Yeah. There's no point in this where it's like, well, I can't, I'm, I, I cannot help you. I'm so busy. Because he cannot, Iron Man can operate everything via remote control. Yep. He's got those ferry holder together rockets yep. that presumably have other purposes. Couldn't he just put like one of his Iron Man drones, couldn't he just get Friday to pilot one, show up at his headquarters and blow him up? Yep. You know, extra judicially, just because <laughs> he's a rich guy and he can get <laughs> yeah, away with can it. Yeah, do it, yeah. But instead he's just like, nah, you handle this. What I love about this is that Tony Stark is just, he's such a dog. And we talked about this when we covered the Iron Man trilogy. This isn't me saying, oh, they wrote this character wrong. He's accidentally terrible. I just think he's terrible. Uh -huh. He's the worst mentor the suit's great, by the way. I love this uh -huh, sure, suit sure, sure. in this. And just the idea that, you know, he should have been keeping Peter Parker in the loop. Because Peter Parker's going to him and going, look, this guy's selling all these weapons. I'm pretty sure I know who it is. He's got to be at the ferry at this time. And One text back. I, I, I've got it. I, I contacted the FBI. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I've looked at the weapons they have, and I reckon if one of them got dinged accidentally, it would cut the ferry in half. <laughs> Maybe leave it. <laughs> we'll see you, Spider-Man, and the ferry's in the middle of the water. Yeah. How are you going to... I can fly, and I've got those ferry holder together rockets. <laughs> so Exactly. And then he gives him an absolute kind of drilling, and he goes, I was the only one that believed in you, which is an insane thing to say to a 15-year-old child. Also... You involved him in this. You brought him in. You're the only one who believed in it because you thought bringing a 15-year-old to a German airport to beat up Captain America was a good idea. Uh -huh. And the idea that, look, I'm going to take this suit off you because if you're nothing without the suit, then you shouldn't have it. That's you also. I know Iron Man 3 makes a point of being like, oh, he's still, you know, he can do things without the suit. But not really. He couldn't beat Thanos without a suit, could Absolutely he? Absolutely not, no. He couldn't even beat Whiplash without mm, a suit. That's right. And he's Russian and exposed. <laughs> that's right. How do you feel about the Spider-Man suit, though? I love it. Um, Bit slick? Because they kind of slick it over with some CGI's. 
I mean, look, my nitpicks are minor. Yeah. I think, you know, having, having you know, in the last couple of years rewatched the Raimi Spider-Man mm. movies, I th- that suit sort of still reigns supreme to me. I like this version. Some of the nitpicks, it looks a little too high tech for me. Yeah. But that, I mean, that, that it's is sort Iron of, Man. it's the um, Iron Man influence. I don't like the fact that there's blue and black in the suit. Pick oh, one. Oh, yeah. Pick one. Yeah. I think blue. Probably should be blue. Yeah. I think also the idea that he has all these gadgets from the get-go, it's kind of too much, and that's kind of part of this story as well. And in the comics, he does have all these gadgets, but it takes him 60 years to get there. You <laughs> know? Right, yeah. And it's just at the start, it's like you've got a drone and an intimidation thing and, I don't know, like a holograph laser machine and everything mm. else, yeah. Also, I think they didn't intend for this to happen, I don't think, but... You know, obviously, the the idea is he's overwhelmed by all the stuff, and he doesn't really need the stuff. He's no. just, you know, it's just Tony Stark overcompensating, filling everything with gadgets. And I think, you know, and the the idea by the end is, well, he doesn't need all that stuff. And I think it's sort of set the precedent that Spider Man suit is filled with gimmicks and gadgets and yeah. what have you. So when we went into Infinity War, Endgame, etc., it's still insanely filled with gadgets, and then it's kind of like, well, that sort of takes away from yeah the, the idea that he's just a a guy on his own, a friendly neighbourhood Spider-Man, you know what I mean? And we'll circle back around to this when we talk about the third one, but yeah, I think that is going to be the direction they're going in moving forward. Unless they got toys to sell. Yeah. <laughs> and they wouldn't have that, would they? No, I don't think so. <laughs> no, 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 no. We've been kind of negative, but I like no, this. I, so this, is, this. I really enjoy this it. This is a really fun... It might know, be the best of the three. Yeah, I like all the school dynamics. Yep. I like all the... The, the school weirdos, just <laughs> the background weirdos. Chess. The, the chess guys. <laughs> you good? Chess. The academic decathlon yep. guys, all the weirdos. I enjoy Zendaya just being in most scenes in the background doing weird stuff. I think also Michael Keaton is just really terrific in I this. Agree, yeah. mm-hmm. And I love this version of the Vulture being a terrifying metal nightmare. Mm-hmm. I enjoy the Spider-Man villains the most that aren't just him. Yes, like a variation uh-huh. on. And yeah, Venom Carnage, whatever. But an idea that... This thing, whatever it is, and I feel the same about Doc Ock, it can counter all the things that he does in a way that's, you know, he's not entirely used to. Mm -hmm. You can't fight a giant flying bird, man. That's difficult and weird. I mean, he does. He does, it's true. But it takes him a few goes, you know? That's right. Exactly. And what I I like about this is there is that personal animus. You know, people people are always going to be like, when is is Tom Holland Spider-Man going to fight Tom Hardy Venom? It doesn't matter because they've got no connection whatsoever. Yeah. Whereas in the comic books, Venom's entire origin and his entire reason for being is an intense hatred of Spider-Man because of their shared history. Whereas if they ever appear in a movie together, they'll have to make something up, I guess. Yeah. But in this, it's like these two have a complicated relationship. Spider-Man is constantly foiling the Vulture's schemes and so the Vulture is furious about that mm. but he also has you know a family that he loves and that's why he's doing it he's not just doing it for like cackling villainous yeah. reasons but then spider-man saves his daughter's life and he learns and then he's he's like well i'll give you one chance to walk away i'm yeah. like that's, that's interesting it's good stuff it's complicated yeah yeah i mean it's a shame now that he's trapped in a parallel universe <laughs> with morbius <laughs> with morbius and <laughs> infinite distance from the family that he loves and he'll do anything for <laughs> And he's just like, well, better form a super villain team, I guess, of good guys. I don't know. My family can sort themselves out, I guess. I don't know. And I guess he built the vulture suit over there again, didn't he? Maybe. Or there was a vulture there already and he just took it. <laughs> he, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. He found it in the he found it in the vault. He found it in the Oscorp vault oh, origins. Yeah. That's right. You remember that? <laughs> the action sequences I enjoy in this, we mentioned the fairy, the punch up that they have at the end. I think the swinging isn't great. I think that's also to do with the locations. It's not a big inner city situation. You sure, know, you're not getting those big New York skyscraper kind of moments. But we did get a moment which I really enjoyed, which is the moment where he has to navigate his way through the suburbs. I thought that was yeah. a fun little, you know, and I, and I think that also speaks to the kind of the John Hughesness of it, just like these 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 kind of comfortable little cozy suburbs. Mm. And how does a we we finally learn how a Spider Man navigates through those, which is he has to just do a lot of running because there's nothing <laughs> crashing to wave through onto. fences. That's a bit of fun, right? <laughs> yeah, no, it is. It's very, and you actually see this moment in this Ferris Bueller running home to his, mm. you know, after to his family or whatever going on. What we do get, I think, is we get we get moments that are spectacular. You know, there's the part where he kind of leaps off. Is it the Washington Monument? He yeah, leaps off yeah. the monument. We see it from all the great angles and etc. But I think, I think the problem with this movie and maybe a lot of modern Marvel movies is. That it's 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 sort of it's sort of workman like direction. Yeah. It's like we need a couple of spectacular moments for the trailer. Just get us that there. was in the trailer, just to get us there. Yeah. 
and and the rest can be just fine, really. Yeah, you know, absolutely. We don't have time. <laughs> we don't have time. We've got to do. We've got to film most of this, and then we've got to give it to the VFX guys. Yeah, <laughs> they can figure it out. Exactly. Uh, just a few fun little cameos or appearances that I enjoy. Hannibal Burris is great. A lot of fun. Where he's like Captain America. He's, I think he's a war criminal now, but I guess we're still using this VHS or whatever. Uh, Martin Starr as Roba Harrington. Is that his name? Yep. He returns from The Incredible Hulk. Uh-huh, sure, Same sure, sure. character. Jennifer Connelly, who's married to Paul Bettany, the voice of Jarvis, is the voice of Spider-Man suit in this. Oh. There you go. So maybe funny. those AIs can get married. No, they can't. He's already married. Wow. Jarvis is already married. Wow. <laughs> uh, Donald Glover, great. Mm-hmm. He turns up in another universe. A, a setup to maybe make him the Prowler, except... Not really, who knows? Well, he who is knows at this point. in the Spider-Verse universe, if it's the same guy. And, of course, Chris Evans has mentioned in his fun little cameos. Yes. So, should we do some trivia? Let's do some trivia. Specifically, Spider-Man trivia coming. That's what we're calling it. Great. That's what you said you wanted to call it. I know. And that's what we're going to call it. Great. Because <laughs> it sounds a bit weird and rude. It does. So, for the Lego Death Star that they're building, they say that it has 3,803 pieces, which is correct. Uh-huh. But the Emperor figure that they have is from the 2016 version, and the 3,803-piece version version is from the 2008 version of the Death Star. Now that's some trivia. Yeah. Now here's a question I have for you. In MCU Spider-Man's first appearance yep. in Captain America Civil War, he lassos Ant-Man ATAT Walkers on Hoth style. Yeah. And he says he saw it in some old movie. Mm. And he doesn't really remember, right? But in this movie, he's very excited for Star Wars Lego Death Star. So in the subsequent, like, couple of years, did he get really into Star Wars and learn everything in the about head. Star Wars? Was Star Wars not hugely popular in the MCU on account of all the superheroes taking the line? Light, and maybe it's had a resurgence. <laughs> maybe, since yeah. Since then, maybe? Maybe what I think happened is, it's only a few months in between, by the way. Or do you think it's maybe that Disney bought Marvel and they also own Star Wars and they wanted a little synergy? I don't think it's that. Oh, okay. I think that maybe he hasn't seen Empire Strikes Back because this is the Return of the Jedi Death Star. So, that's so he's only he seen Return of the Jedi <laughs> and he's so jazzed. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, Kenneth Choi, who plays Principal Morita, also played the Howling Commando Jim Morita in Captain America the First Avenger. You can actually see the photo of that Howling Commando member on his desk because it's his grandson. That's nice. Yeah. That's cool. According to James Gunn, Stan Lee's cameo in this film was one of the four Lee cameos filmed in one day alongside his appearance in Doctor Strange, Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2, and another one. Huh. Maybe a Thor movie, I don't know. And Gwyneth Paltrow, who appears in this movie, she thought that she was shooting a scene for the Avengers and it wasn't until a few years later that she found out that she was in this film. I don't know if you've seen that interview. I have, yeah. yeah. Remember Spider-Man at the end and, and, the, and, and Tom Holland's there and you're going to walk out and do a press conference and I give oh, you the ring? yes. That was Spider-Man. That was Spider-Man? <laughs> I don't think she knows if she's in any of these movies, honestly. Yeah. Oh, but I do enjoy that where people go and they ask her, like, what do you think of this? And she's like, uh, yeah. Did I? What it, is it? <laughs> Should I mean, I? Um, but this was right in that era where they were yeah. doing so many of these. And, and they were everybody s- had to do a cameo in everybody else's movie. And, and they were separated during Civil War and now they're not. Mm. Like, it was, a, it was a complicated time to be Gwyneth Paltrow. That's right. <laughs> Anyways, in terms of box office, on a budget of $175 million, it made $880 million. This was a return to form. This is what Sony was looking for in a Spider-Man movie. And by Jove, did they get it. It, by Jove. I mean... We're bringing back by Jove, are we? We're bringing it back. It's 2024, Mason. <laughs> yeah, I think obviously Civil War helped. But yeah, people were interested in Spider-Man again. And, you know, these movies, box office-wise, continue to do well over the next few years. Because, of course, we are going to be coming back next week to talk about Spider-Man Big Euro Boy. <laughs> That's right. You know? Yeah, it's Euro Disco time for Spider-Man. <laughs> If you do want to see that early, you can actually head over to BigSandwich.co. That's like our private Patreon, isn't it, Mason? Yes. It's true. 2024, it's true. (laughs) It's got early videos. We've got movie commentaries. We do video game Let's Plays. Our podcast, The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows, that actually comes out there early on Sunday as opposed to Monday. But if you do want to check out that podcast, it's got its own YouTube channel, Spotify, Apple, all of those things. That's right. I had a couple of thoughts about the cast. Let's talk about the cast. I'll put it in earlier. Put it in earlier. Or now, whatever. Well, I was just going to say, uh, you know, I, I thought Laura Harrier was great as, uh, as as Liz Allen. thought she did a great job. Yep. Marissa Tomei, obviously. Yuck, Aunt May. An absolutely yuck, Aunt May. 
Disgusting. What were they thinking? Yuck. Ugh. <laughs> I mean, we know Aunt May's supposed to be an old hag. Yeah. But you didn't have to go as far as you did. You don't need to lean into it this hard. God. And uh, uh, Jacob Batalon as as the man in the chair. Oh, he's fine. The, the he? problem with with this is he's Ned, obviously. Yeah. What they've done is they've just taken Miles Morales' best friend Ganky. Yes. From the Ultimate Spider-Man universe. They yankied him. To, they, they, they yankied, yankied Ganky. him into this. <laughs> they, they gave Ganky a Yankee and they put him into this, which means that when Miles Morales inevitably makes his debut as Spider-Man in this universe, if that is going to happen before the reboot, who knows? Mm. They're going to need to give him a new best friend? Oh, yeah. Who's it going to be? Ned Leeds again. Great. I'm back in school. <laughs> That's great, yeah. <laughs> do you think they're going to do Parallel Universe Miles Morales or they're just going to have him here? Because he's mentioned in this in passing. That's true, yeah. yeah. I think they're probably just going to put him in. I think... I think It's just simpler. Yeah, it's simpler, and I think maybe the world has, has, uh, has had its fill of multiversal. You ain't uh, wrong, brother. Uh, ad- adventures. Exactly. It's 2024. We're tired of the multiverse. <laughs> Just give us one universe to worry about, will you? <laughs> exactly. God. Oh, and John Favreau. Of course. He's um, great. Just having a good time. He's having a good time. He's having a good time. Again, you know, it, it, maybe he should pass along more of those messages to mm. Tony Stark, but he's, he's fun. He's busy. He's bu- yeah, exactly. He's got to move all of Thor's stuff or he's, whatever he's doing. Yeah. He's, he's angry and he's useless, and I love that about him. <laughs> yeah, me too. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Ben and Lawrence for coming back for another year. <laughs> they didn't right. want to. They swore they wouldn't. <laughs> but then we said, how about we make these edits really difficult? Yeah. And they said, good, a challenge. That's what we love. How could you turn down an offer like that? That's right. All right, thanks, everybody. Grab that, Jeremy, guys. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.